Welcome, everybody. I am so excited to be with you here today. My name is Beth Pratt, and I am the Regional Executive Director for the National Wildlife Federation, and I lead the Save LA Cougars campaign. But hey, I don't care about that title. My most proud title is Cougar Lady. And we have such a fun day here. This book, Cougar Crossing, is incredible. It's about P-22's story and how he came to Griffith Park, but also about this wildlife crossing we're working to build, which is pretty incredible. And I know a lot of you tuning in uh, really want to hear about this project, but this is a, a captured incredibly with the art, the writing, and we'll get to that. We have a great group of folks with you here today. What I want you to put in the comments right now, hey, how many of you have seen a wildlife crossing? I want to hear from you, and you'll learn more about crossings as we read, but more specifically about our hero, P-22, our beloved cat. Uh, so let's bring on, we have a great group from the scientist to the artist to the author that I want to introduce here, who we're all going to read from this book uh, as we go. So here we are. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to just turn it right over to the author here. Meeg, Meeg introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Meek Pincus. Thank you, Beth. I'm so excited to be here. And special shout out to all the classes of kids that are with us today. Um, I am the author of Cougar Crossing. Um, and I write true stories for kids about solutionaries, people solving problems for people, animals, and the planet. I've got a couple other nature-themed books, Winged Wonders, which is solving the great monarch migration mystery and ocean soup, a recipe for you, me, and a cleaner sea. I love writing about amazing people helping nature like all of these amazing people here today. And I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much, Ming. And I do want to give a special call out to me because she worked with Jeff and Miguel and I to make sure this story was right. And I, we really appreciate that. And you also included a lot of information on how people can get involved with mountain lion protection and the wildlife crossing. So we really appreciate you using your art to help further the cougar cause. So anyway, but let's pass it to my hero, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to hear from Jeff today. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Sorry, I have someone ringing my doorbell right now. <laughs> um, so you might see me waving some people away. But anyways, I'm Jeff Sickage, a wildlife biologist with the National Park Service at Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. Um, I work on our long-term mountain lion study. I manage the field work for this research. Um, that's all I have right now. I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. And another awesome person here, Miguel. Miguel, tell them what you do, which is a lot. <laughs> I'll try to keep it brief. Um, my name is Miguel Dignana. I'm a wildlife biologist and also I'm a senior manager in the community science office at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. And it's also home to an exhibit dedicated to the P-22 story. And also, um, yeah, I had a, a really fun time um, working with Meeg and, and working on the details. And, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I also study urban bats and urban carnivores as part of my work. So it's, it's, I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Awesome. And then last but not least, the, the man who brought, uh, who, who made us book characters. I love that uh, Jeff, Miguel, and I all are now, we know what the children's book version of us is. But, but more than that, it's so beautifully illustrated and I think really gets at, you know, just sort of the, the, the real feel. You know, you really bring P-22 in the area alive in a way that's really special, Alex. So please introduce yourself. Sure, thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Alexander Vidal. I'm an illustrator. Uh, I work on lots of different subjects, but my favorite thing to illustrate is nature and wildlife. So luckily, I've gotten to do a few different books about animals in different ways. Uh, when I got the email about this project, I think this is the fastest I've ever said yes to a project. I've been obsessed with P22 for years. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, and I actually live right below Griffith Park. So the same trails that I got to illustrate in this book are the trails that I hike once a week. So this is definitely, definitely a dream project for me. Um, I was really happy to bring both 
P22 alive in this book, but also just show how incredible Southern California's natural environments are. So, you did that really well. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, someone put they wanted to check out the P22 exhibit. It is awesome. Uh, the Natural History Museum did a good job at really showing like the research Jeff does as part of the National Park Service, the, uh, you know, what the crossing is going to be, how, you know, P22, what his environment in Griffith Park is like. So Miguel, your team did a, a really amazing job on that exhibit. Uh, but let's get, get get to it. I'm going to turn it over to, to me to start off the reading. We're sort of going to alternate here. Uh, we're going to play ourselves in some respects, or Jeff and uh, Miguel are. But let's get into reading this book. Um, Mig, turn it over to you. Yay. Well, first, for all the kids in the house, we wanted to show you there's a page at the end of the book of all of the amazing uh, uh, drawings that Alexander did of wildlife of Southern California. And if you can see it, it says on there, can you find them in this book? So I'm gonna try to show you. And for the kids in the house, you're gonna be able to look and find all of these animals as you read the book. So either today you'll get to see them on the screen or when you get the book from your library um, or a bookstore, you can find the books, uh, find the animals as you read. So I wanted Mate, to- I was just gonna say, the adults can do it too. We love the wildlife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this crowd, yes. Everyone find the animals. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Here we go, it's Cougar Crossing, how Hollywood's celebrity cougar helped build a bridge for city wildlife. And here's the first spread. P-22 is his name, for real. P for puma, also called a mountain lion or cougar. 22 for ID number. More on that later. He paces, muscles flex, tail twitches, famous letters loom above him in the night. How did this mountain lion get here? to a park squeezed between three huge highways in America's second largest city. How did he become P-22, the famous Hollywood cougar and a hero for city wildlife? And now when we turn the page, you're going to see there's Jeff and Miguel in the corner and they're gonna read their parts as they comment throughout the story. So take it away guys. <laughs> We wildlife biologists can guess how P-22 got to that spot. You're muted, Jeff. Can you unmute, Jeff? We want to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie move. <laughs> and we know how he became a hero because we were part of it. All right. So here we're back to P-22's story. Born in the Santa Monica Mountains, a national park area near the city of Los Angeles, P-22 faced his first big challenge at age two. The time came for him to disperse, to leave home, to find a territory of his own, claim it with claw wipes on the ground, and protect it to the death from cougar competitors. You can see him there, how they protect their territory. But other males had already claimed every inch of these mountains and the rumbling city bellowed below. P-22 needed a way to get to more mountains with space to spare, but how? Oh, oh, we've got a way. <laughs> a way to help all the LA mountain lions and other critters squeezed for space like this. Yeah, so you see the picture. This is the vision of, the, of all the wildlife biologists and scientists. And the best bet, it's a bridge, a big, wide animal bridge, a wildlife crossing covered in trees and grass. This could connect the city's last natural spaces to more mountain ranges and open land up north. But sadly, no such wildlife crossing existed. We tried for years to get a wildlife crossing constructed, but we didn't have the support we needed. LA's puma population was on its own and on the road to extinction. 
right? So there's no bridge. That bridge was a fantasy at that point. So there's our mountain lion. What's he going to do? So P22 headed into the city. And now Beth is going to take over and tell us what happened next. I was picturing this like some of the uh, table readings they've been doing uh, with all the celebrities. <laughs> I'm like, who would play Jeff and Miguel? <laughs> Here we go. Like a tourist, he strolled past Beverly Hills mansions and Hollywood hotspots. Then he hit his next big challenge, huge freeways packed with nonstop speeding cars and trucks. Oh, man. We've lost too many LA Cougars to car crashes. Miguel, one more time with feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we've lost too many LA Cougars to car crashes. And here's our very sad face as the cartoon character. More every, every year. By some miracle, P-22 made it across two major freeways, surviving 20 lanes of LA's legendary traffic. He found himself in a green hilly place with no other cougar scents around. He couldn't go back, but he couldn't go forward. And then the photos you see, or the illustrations swipe. He claimed the spot as his own. And I like to think of this moment, and I'm so glad you included it in here because you know, mountain lions will scratch trees to claim their territory. And I just imagine P-22 getting to Griffith Park and saying, swipe, I'm home. Next page. Griffith Park was a puny pad for a puma. Oh, you know, my old eyes. <laughs> Some 17 times smaller than a typical territory. But P-22 made do. I jumped when I saw him on the remote camera, a mountain lion in our city park, for real? So yeah, we had to get this crazy cat into our National Park Service mountain lion study. He stalked prey at night, mostly deer, sometimes a coyote or a raccoon. He hid from humans, and doze during the day. It's not a bad life, really, and pretty typical for the Hollywood jet set. <laughs> One night, P-22 caught scent of a human. He heard a rustle in the brush and whipped his head around for a look. Too late, he felt a sharp pinprick in his haunch. It took me three weeks to find our ghost cat. Then we gave him a nice nap, a checkup, a tag, and a radio tracking collar. And don't forget a name, P-22, the 22nd Puma tagged in the study. We get a lot of calls to rename P-22, but I think we like his name, P-22. <laughs> anyway, next page. Sometimes P-22 scratched markings in the dirt and planted his scent to attract a mate. But his signals were met with silence. Poor guy. His territory was too small and isolated for a mate. And we couldn't move him out. Wild male cougars rarely survive relocation. Okay, this is a sad part of the story. One day after eating some small prey in the park, P-22 started to feel sick. His skin burned and itched. His hair dropped off in clumps. His eyes nearly swelled shut. What was happening? Rodent poison was happening for wild predators. We captured P-22 and gave him some life-saving medicine. Come on, people. There are plenty of ways to repel rodents without poison. Look them up. Next page. Feeling better many months later, P-22 wandered into a neighborhood near the park. He discovered a cozy spot, calm and quiet, dark and dry, and settled down for a snooze. 
<laughs> when he woke up, loud voices and bright lights. And I can attest that Miguel, Jeff, and I were watching this unfold live. <laughs> um, yes, and I think I did yell this just like, you know, um, a media circus, get out of there. <laughs> We told them to clear the crowds and give P-22 some space to exit, but nobody would budge. I think they actually had helicopters uh, buzzing the neighborhood, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but there's a happy ending. After most of the harried humans finally headed home, P-22 slinked back into the night. He'd just lie low inside the park territory and try to avoid any big challenges for a while. Meanwhile, P-22 had become world famous, or even more famous. Finally, more folks were caring about cougars and supporting the wildlife crossing. Okay, next page. Okay, some of you will remember this part of the story. Um, however, one spot inside the park enticed P-22 with its nightly sounds and scents. Strange sounds and scrumptious sense of prey he'd never heard or smelled before. And then this, P-22 ate one of LA Zoo's koalas for dinner. Would his fans freak out? Nope. People, even the zoo director, stood by their favorite cougar. The public came in in support of P-22. It was amazing. We still felt bad for the koala, though. <laughs> and here we are at P-22 Day. And I just want to note, there's me next to the thermometer. That's what I look like in a kid's book. <laughs> and you even put the cougar collar on. P-22 continued to avoid humans of, at all costs, as cougars do. Even on the day in Griffith Park, hosted flocks of his fans, he was probably sleeping on the other side of the park. Uh, the P-22 Day Festival on October 22nd, named our Cool Cats Day by the city of LA. I love hearing Jeff's sweet side. Yeah. Uh, so much support. <laughs> so much support for city wildlife and the crossing. P-22 day, likely October 23rd this year. Mark your calendars. And then I'm going to turn it, I believe, back over to me. That just made my year hearing you all read that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. So now P-22 paces, perhaps more slowly than he used to. Late in his lifespan, he likely won't live long enough to see the completed crossing. But thanks to him, it will be built to save his cougar cousins and other wildlife. Hollywood's celebrity cougar will forever be a hero to city animals everywhere. He spotlighted a message for us all. We must build bridges to live in harmony with nature, for real. Thanks, P22, for the future. Jeff, with your biggest sweetness now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you did this, buddy. <laughs> oh. 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 Uh, trying to get all of your words into those little bubbles was quite a fun challenge, but thank you. And here we have the back matter of the book. So the back matter is at the end of a of a picture book where we add all the extra juicy facts. And I had so much I wanted to put in. Um, so you've got a timeline, 20 years of LA's mountain lions. You've got cougar facts, wildlife crossing facts. And then the last spread is, again, can you find them the animals in this book? Uh, I, hope you, I hope you spotted some of them. I did, I love all of them. Especially that you put butterflies and lizards because we talk about P-22 a lot and the mountain lions, and of course they are most at risk of extinction. But as Jeff will tell you through his research or Miguel, 
it's the little guys also need connectivity and all wildlife's going to use this crossing, not just the cougars. So I think that's really important for people to understand. I think we're moving on to questions now. Jeff, you were you were giving me and Miguel the feels, man. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I watched a lot of soap operas before. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me and saying your lines. <laughs> Especially uh, uh, Miguel. Come on, people. <laughs> oh. Yeah, please. What questions do people have? Comments. Um, again, uh, P22 Day, we're looking at uh, definitely October 23rd this year. Last year, we had the Black Pumas, Governor Newsom. Uh, it'll probably be a combo of virtual. So for those of you who can't attend uh, this year uh, in person, uh, you'll have the virtual option as well. And oh, my own little mountain lion wants to be in in the broadcast. Um, if people want an update in the crossing uh, while we're waiting for questions, wow. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff, Miguel, and so many others, we've been working on this for, you know, me a decade and, you know, Jeff for longer. Uh, we will have final blueprints from Caltrans in August. It, it is just astounding. And we will likely be breaking ground if we keep up our successful track of fundraising in November. So it is just really incredible to contemplate that this idea is now uh, an impending reality. And that's from a work of a lot of dedicated people. Um, but it's also efforts like me uh, that helps get the word out that's enabled us to get this far. So um, at the end, we'll show you how you can buy the book. If you buy it from the Save LA Cougar store, not only will you support the author, but all proceeds will go to the Wildlife Crossing. But uh, at the end, we will show you how to buy. Uh, questions. We're just getting, oh, here we go. Projected, finished. Oh, Wade, Wade Rowland. My college buddy's tuning in from Austin, Texas. <laughs> um, um, so it's looking like about three and a half, four years from start date, the bridge will be completely finished. Remember, we have to propagate it with native plants, things like that. But uh, the structure itself should actually go up pretty quick. Mary said, we love the Black Pumas. Hey, we had them first at the festival before they played at the inauguration and got a Grammy. So does P22 know how to pick talent or what? Uh <laughs> I think there was a question. Yeah, uh, where did we? Where did I get the idea to write the book? Do you see that one, Beth? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. She's got it on the screen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I was doing research on wildlife crossings around the world for another book that's actually coming out next year called "Make Way for Animals," and I, a friend of mine, Christina Cherez, who may be here, um, sent me an article on P twenty two. And this was years ago. I, the, people don't know how long picture books take. So this was probably, I don't even know what year it was, but I, th I was so fascinated by P22 that I kind of went down, we call it the rabbit hole of research. I started getting all that I could find about his story. And it ended up being a totally separate story for me because I thought it was so compelling. It deserved its own book. So that's really how it came about. And we have a special guest. Uh, Tony, can you put Margie Steigerwald's comments up? Um, Jeff, especially will recognize Margie. I worked with her in Yosemite. She just retired from the National Park Service. She was instrumental in helping everybody get connected to start, um, you know, uh, me help with the wildlife crossing. So uh, there's Margie. Uh, nice to see you. <laughs> We also um, had some questions. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I just see some questions about 22. I can give yep. an update on him. Um, so yeah, we last recaptured him in mid-February um, to replace his GPS radio collar. We have been following him now for nine years in Griffith Park. Um, it was in 2012 that Miguel checked his remote cameras and got that first photo of him. Um, so it's been great to collect this long-term data on this individual. Um, he's around 11 to 12 years old now, which is 
pretty old for a mountain lion, uh, but he looks he looks good. He was he weighed um, 56 kilograms at his last capture. That's around 125 pounds. Um, his teeth look good, and we're continuing to follow him. Um, he is the only mountain lion in Griffith Park. Um, Griffith Park is extremely small for um, a home range for a mountain lion. Um, he's been the only one in there for nine years. Um, and yeah, he has not been able to find a mate because he's the only one in there. I'm just reading through the comments now, but uh, yeah. He's a, uh, I think a lifelong bachelor. We also get asked, yeah, again, he's the only cat in Griffith Park. So, um, you know, bachelorhood isn't all that, you know, bad for mountain lions. They do not mate for life. Uh, they are, uh, I will use the non-scientific term kind of players. Uh, you know, they don't, you know, they sort of uh, date a lot of other cougars and spend most of their time alone. So uh, it's, it perhaps is not as hard you know, for uh, P22 as some other species to um, uh, to be there. Um, a, a relative of Miguel has a question. Has anybody other than Miguel, Jeff or Beth seen P22 on a hike? Um, Jeff, do you want to address, you know, or Miguel, I, there's actually, you know, except for remote cameras or ring cameras, a lot of people don't cite him actually in the park. He's good at staying away from people, right? Um, yeah, so not only P-22, but all mountain lions. Um, they're very elusive animals. Um, I tell people, even us biologists who track these individuals, right? They have radio collars. We have an antenna. We can go out there. We know where they are. They're up on the hillside 50 meters from us. And, and we hardly ever see these animals. Um, I tell people, you know, these mountain lions see us practically every day in California and in other areas. And we rarely see them. So they're, they're very elusive. Um, I've, I've only seen P-22 when I've captured him. <laughs> um, I haven't seen him hiking around. Um, I've only had a few confirmed sightings in the past nine years of people who happen to be hiking and then saw him. So it's very rare. I know we get a lot of photos shared with us and I always feel bad. It's usually a bobcat or dog you know, when people yeah. share it. But, uh. And that's, that's the amazing thing too, that really speaks to the mountain lion's elusive nature. We have Griffith Park where what, 10 to 15 million people a year visit um, and and every day there's people recreating in there and yet he stays elusive. And we see that from his GPS points too. You know, during the day he's hunkered down low, um, staying away from people. Miguel, what are some wildlife though, if people are hiking in Griffith Park, what are some wildlife they likely will see? Yeah, um, deer, if you're in a, in a more wilder section of the park, you'll see deer. Uh, California ground squirrels, eastern fox squirrels, and certain canyons, western gray squirrels, um, which are a native tree squirrel. And uh, lizards, especially when it's warm, um, you'll see a lot of western fence lizards. Um, I think those are actually illustrated in the book, which is pretty cool. Um, and, um, and I think, um, yeah, coyotes, if you're lucky, uh, around dusk, uh, evening hikes, sometimes they'll, they'll pop out. Um, I've to Jeff's point, I mean, I, I go out and I have cameras. I've had cameras in the park since P-22 was discovered, and I check them regularly every two weeks or so. And I go to places where P-22 tends to frequent more often than other spots. And I myself, even though I've gone through the to Griffith Park almost every couple of weeks or even more frequent than that, um, I've never seen them. Um, and, and a lot of misconceptions are that because Griffith Park is so busy, gets thousands of people every day, that there's, uh, that he's the exception and, and everybody's probably has a good likelihood of seeing him and that's not the case. I don't even say, and for me, I would even extend that to bobcats. I saw my very first bobcat in the park, even though I grew up going to the park and have worked in the park quite a bit. I saw my very first bobcat this year. Um, and so, yeah, they're, they're really elusive, these wildcats, and, and mountain lions are even more elusive. Um, so anyway, just wanted to add that. 
Thanks, Miguel. And I know uh, Tony or, or Karina, and let's thank uh, Tony and Karina both behind the scenes for putting this together. Um, really appreciate it. You had posted, uh, we have some few questions for Alexander, the artist. I know you had posted it before I interrupted. So let's get to a couple of those. I think one, uh, how did you get into children? Oh, there you go. Let's do that one. Sure. Well, I'll start from the, the first one. How did I get into children's illustrations? For me, my obsession with nature and wildlife and my career in illustration have always been incredibly linked. Uh, I actually went back to study illustration after already having completed a prior degree. And part of what drew me to go back into that was um, I had this really strong love of nature, but I didn't really have a, a good way to channel it. And I was actually living in South Africa at the time. And I was uh, in this big national park in South Africa, and I was just sketching everything I saw. And I thought, well, maybe I could make this a career. And so I started from there. And luckily, I've been able to work with a lot of different clients on um, books about nature and wildlife, also some organizations. Uh, I work regularly with Ranger Rick Jr., which is a great job. Um, also, That's the National Wildlife Federation. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I've to work with some organizations like the Natural History Museum here in Los Angeles, as well as the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So I'm very grateful that there are a lot of people who want illustrations of wildlife. Um, and then I saw there were some questions specifically about the book. Um, my favorite illustration in the book, I mean, I think the opening of him under the Hollywood sign is definitely one of my favorites, uh, just because it's such an iconic, iconic image and setting. So that's absolutely one of my favorites. Um, I think later when there's another one when he's alone in the park looking out over the neighborhood. Uh, I like that one because I, I love nature and wildlife. I also love LA's weird mix of modernist architecture. So it was a fun way to kind of match those scenes up. Um, one of the best things about doing this book and living in Los Angeles is that I was constantly using this book as an excuse to go out for hikes to do research. So I could leave my studio, go for a hike for a few hours, take tons of photos, come back and work on the illustration. Uh, and then the last one, I see somebody asked about the biggest challenge. For me, I think that was cars. I hate illustrating cars. So it's such, it's such a vital part of the story that he had to cross those freeways, but trying to illustrate a freeway with multiple lanes of traffic and show all the different cars. Uh, it took it took a few tries to figure out a way to make that not look like a, a total mess. But <laughs> you did a you. great job. You did Thank a. You. I, I love the illustrations, and oh, I you. I want to give a call out to how art has shaped this campaign. I mean, we need the science. I'm a scientist, right? We need we need the science from Jeff and Miguel and and all the others. But to capture people's imaginations, it's really the art from Steve Winner's you know photo of P22 under the Hollywood sign that just changed minds to art like you're doing, Alexander. And to that end, um, when Tony gets a minute, can you place a link to the Verizon thing we launch we had this week, which is Verizon partnered with Snap and Google to do this AR experience. You can actually have it home. You can either go, there's a famous mural by Louis Masai in Venice. You can go and actually have the mural pop out of the wall on you. Or at home, you can download Snapchat and actually have P22 walk around your living room. Uh, so it's really art that has helped us capture people's imaginations um, and you know propel this. And I, I mean the written word as well, propel this forward. So uh, so Alex you know, and, and me, art changes the world. And I, this is just one more example of, you know, I think of how many people are gonna learn about mountain lions and, and how we can coexist with mountain lions and, and how we can build such visionary structures like the crossing because of this book. So thank you. Cool. Did we want to bring in uh, April? Uh, there she is. Look at that. <laughs> hi, <laughs> everybody. Introduce yourself. Uh, I hope you're oh. going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm April. Um, I work on the California team, Save LA Cougars, and I do operations. And my very favorite part of my job is getting to curate our online store. And so we are so thrilled to have Cougar Crossing in the store. Um, it's so beautiful. It's been, it was really fun listening to you guys read along. I got to read along with you. And um, we have the book. The easiest way to get it right now is if you go to our Facebook page, it's actually the link is pinned right at the top. So you can go right directly there. And other ways to get to the store is also through the Save LA Cougars website at savelacougars.org. So please get your copy of the book. We have it. And if you get it through our store, you're supporting the campaign. You're also getting a signed copy by the author and an iHeart P22 sticker. 
So we highly recommend you grab your copy. Oh, thank you, Tony, for pulling that up. Yeah, you can see it right there on the store. You can see the sticker and um, we'll ship that to you. We're selling it for $15 and it ships for $7.99. So check it out. And it comes with a, sign, a signed book plate by the author too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's did, right. did you have a, a did you have one example you wanted to show with that? I know we didn't have it for April to show um, of the book plate. I don't, but oh, it, right. I sent them all. <laughs> oh, no worries. Yeah, and uh, shout out to my mom, who I know is probably listening. Mar Mama Pratt, uh, Martha, she is our volunteer shipper and warehouse person. So she will be placing your shipments and making sure you get that signed uh, book plate. So. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Boy, uh, the love being shown for your book. This is amazing. It's I it is a beautiful book. I told Meg all my holiday shopping's done. Um, I want to ask a question, you know, uh, to, to Jeff and Miguel. I mean, I, I know this was a little out of your usual area, but um, did the what you know, as you were going through this with me and reviewing like I was did was this what you expected i mean what surprised you the most uh about when you saw the final product i can go i mean i i think um the illustrations just blew me away and um the attention to detail i really appreciated um, all my edits being incorporated and um there weren't many because me was on top of it uh, but it was really great to see just like this nice combo of something that's chill, child friendly, accurate, and beautiful to look at. Um, so it was just, it just uh, exceeded my expectations. And as a father, um, I, I, my daughter loves it. And I know I've heard from other kids that they love it too. And, and uh, I'm also excited that it's in our local bookstores and and in our LA County libraries so that everybody has access to this. Um, and obviously on the Save LA Cougars website as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just echo what Miguel said. Um, working with Meeg was awesome. And yeah, your attention to detail and incorporating our edits was great. But yeah, I was really blown away by the illustration by Alexander too. I mean, yeah, you did a great job. It was, it's awesome. Um, I've been passing this book out to people. Um, my five-year-old loves it as well. And yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. Yep. I love how you simplified the story. I mean, we threw a lot at you in those early days. And of course there's a lot to this story, but you really got it down. I think to, you know, the core of what we as the scientists or advocates for this crossing or for coexisting with mountain lions wanted to get across. Um, I, you know, I, I echo what both Miguel and Jeff said, but also that you really got the spirit of it that what I spend a lot of my time trying to communicate. So thank you. Oh, thank you all. That means everything. And, and, you know, thank you, Alexander, for bringing it to life. Um, I see a question from Cindy Olson of whether I decided early to put Jeff and Miguel in the story talking or decided later. And Jeff and Miguel and Beth will attest that the early drafts didn't have that. Um, I tried so many different ways because like Beth was saying, there were so many layers to the story. I knew kids wanted to follow P22, but I also really wanted to get across the story of all the scientists and the people who were advocating for this wildlife crossing. So I ended up doing that sort of two tiered story and brought in uh, Jeff and Miguel. So I wondered if they were surprised <laughs> to see that. Uh, and Alexander did an amazing job bringing them to life as well. Yeah, you know those uh, those those illustrations of them are going to pop up uh, in some good places. <laughs> Jeff and Miguel. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a surprise at first. I was like, oh my gosh! And then when I heard about it, without seeing my picture, um, and but thanks to that uh, Alexander was on board with this project. He. He made me look way more handsome than than I am, so um, it was very flattering. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the the quotes were fun and engaging, and I thought it was just a really great use of of the people and the story. Yeah. Uh, yes, we did. 
you didn't capture all my gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and Jeff, we've been working on this project together so long. I've seen you go gray. When we first started, you were not. You were yeah, not I've been gray, gray for a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, there's a question for you. And this is actually a question we've never gotten before, which is, you know, we don't get a lot of those. Uh, Amy is asking, do you have to go in to clear the remnants when P22 takes down a deer? Oh, no. Yeah. So we when we investigate his kill sites, um, because of that GPS collar, we get points sent to us remotely, locations with the time and date stamp. And when we see a cluster of points, meaning P22 or any of our lions has stayed in one area for multiple days, we'll hike into that area to identify what the animal killed and ate. And no, we just leave it as is. Um, so after any lion finishes a kill, um, there'll be scavengers that come in and pick at it too. Um, Everything from beetles to birds to coyotes. Um, so yeah, we leave all of that. We're kind of the eye in the sky, really just studying what is naturally going on. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. And we we had um, Tony come on. You got to see Tony for a minute. I was hoping she'd stay, but uh, Debbie, actually, Debbie, you what a great segue because I was just about to say this. Um, we are this. This live video to your question, Debbie, will be available on Facebook. Uh, and then we will be posting it to the NWF um, YouTube channel um, so that you will be able to access it off Facebook as well. So, you know, we want this to be shared. Educators, if you're watching, please use it in your classrooms. Um, parents at home, you know, this is a great reading hour if you want a few minutes to yourself, uh, especially we know you've been uh, over, you know, overburdened during this pandemic and having to provide entertainment for your children. So we hope this gives you a little break. Um, but yes, both here on Facebook, uh, uh, right after this, it'll be in P22's videos, and then we will share once it is available elsewhere um, uh, on other channels as well. Tony, you're my guide. Are we uh, are we in wrap up mode, or does it look like we got more questions? Uh, any anything else we haven't said, uh, Meg, Alec, Jeff, or Miguel, before we uh, sign off? I would just love to to say. Um, Anyone who wants to support the book, do please buy it from Save LA Cougars, buy those out. And when you're done buying those, order them at your library or from your independent bookstore. And reviews for the book are one of the best ways you can support it, putting your reviews, how you like it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Goodreads, that really helps um, to sort of get it to more people. So thank you for the support. Welcome, Tony. What do you want to tell us, Tony? <laughs> Just, just <laughs> that uh, we're gonna try to play the video that you requested. Uh, that you requested the Verizon video. Oh, cool! All right, let's watch okay. that before we sign off. This is pretty cool stuff. Again, gets at how art can be a game changer. So you can see how they how they made P22 come off the wall like that. Isn't that amazing? Our artist and muralist Luis Masai and his work here in Albuquerque is also part of the National Wildlife Federation's campaign to save the LA Cougars. And his work is driven to raise awareness to these beautiful creatures and animals that are going extinct. And the reason they're going extinct is because we put freeways in their travel path. And here we have a chance to fix it. We're going to build a wildlife crossing across one of the busiest freeways in the world. With Verizon 5G Ultravitamin, which is already available in select cities like LA, we can create AR land experiences that are even more immersive. It's just a unique opportunity for us where we can blend technology and art to share this message about the importance of preserving natural habitat of wild animals. With this uh, 5G technology, we get to put more in the lens. So that means more putting details into our 3D models of the environment. And so I think you can see with the experience where you can see how the textures look real and they're very true to nature. I mean, it's just what an incredible interpretation of P22. The P stands for Puma, 
which is another name for mountain lion, and he's 22nd cat tagged in the National Park Service. I can't think of a more different way to connect than this incredible AR experience that is going to open a lot of eyes that normally might not have paid attention to the plight of a mountain lion or to how to build a wildlife crossing. I hope we will see more collaborations like this when art connects with some meaningful goal to make a positive impact on our environment and our society. It could launch a chain of reaction of similar initiatives, maybe inspire people to change their perspective and maybe look different at the environmental transformation around us. Thanks for Thanks sharing, for sure. Tony. Uh, for those of you who ask about P22 um, not having a mate, well, Verizon and Snap made it possible to have one in that video. But I think I'm going to go to Verizon and say our next AR needs to be using the Cougar Crossing book. That would be pretty cool to have him come off the page here. So uh, anyway, again, um, thanks, everybody, for being here. Cougar Crossing. Again, another example of how incredible art, words, and illustrations in this book can really help uh, you know, people get engaged in a cause and make a difference. So thank you again to Meeg and Alexander for this incredible book. And for also, again, seeing what uh, Jeff, Miguel, and I look like as a kid's character. And then to Jeff and Miguel, uh, thank you both for being here and for getting into character. <laughs> And obviously for all the incredible work you do for uh, wildlife. Um, and to Tony and Karina and April, thanks for all the behind the scenes and some front of the scenes for making this incredible reading go off. Uh, obviously uh, we couldn't do it without you. So, and for all of you showing up, thank you so much for being here. And I will tell you, stay tuned. The Wildlife Crossing, as we said, is progressing. We uh, probably will be having a series of announcements as we approach uh, you know, final blueprints from Caltrans in August. So stay tuned for those. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all.